that. <laughs> <laughs> so you had mentioned that uh, playing John Doggett was one of your favorite roles. So we're really interested to hear some of uh, some of your memories from playing him. I fair. I don't have a lot of memories. It's funny. I see. Uh, I've got fans now that are posting. I don't even know what you call them. It's this social phenomena, this social media stuff. I see clips and I see scenes and, and what do you call them? GIFs, uh, GIFs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I see these on the Twitter and I look and I don't even know who or what I'm doing, why, what the story is. I have and I think over time, um, I've played so many characters, it's just been compressed into an amount of time that I had, uh, what was going on in my life, and I can't remember the particular episodes that much. It's bizarre. However, I have incredibly fond memories of how uh, the show impacted me personally and the things that were going on. And I think that's basically the only way I can look at these, uh, these jobs anymore. As I get older and older, it's what I was doing in my life and, and what, what the job meant to me with my family. Cause ultimately, uh, this is just how I provide for my family. Um, and, uh, how it impacted us. Um, I was, uh, looking for a good gig uh expecting my son to be born i had done the sopranos i got wise to the fact that television writing was superior to most of the movies i was doing uh and i i sort of put it out there to my agents that i was looking for a good tv gig the tv was an overlooked medium in the robert patrick business and um uh, david chase and the boys in the sopranos had made me you know, realize that what they were doing was a lot better than a lot of films that I would do. So uh, that's how that came about. Um, I heard from Chris Carter. I was on the hook to NBC for another show that uh, I had, after saying that, uh, been asked to be involved with. I had I'd done a pilot for all three networks, I believe, at this time, and NBC still had me under contract. And uh, Chris had met me for something and uh, remember me from Fire in the Sky and then asked me to come in and uh, play John Doggett. I don't remember ever reading for John Doggett except for the day I went and read for the executives at Fox. It was the only time. I remember there were a lot of candidates for that spot, John Doggett other actors involved that I, I saw there that I didn't realize were in contention with the role. So, uh, yeah. How's that for an answer? You got to think back to, you know, this was the uh, advent of the uh, internet was all around this time. And uh, much to my chagrin found out that uh, there was a whole uh, a group of fans uh, that were uh, 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 not unhappy misconstrued uh, idea of what I was doing and uh, you know uh, why I was coming on the X-Files I had no idea that the uh, I didn't really understand the internet to be honest with you. my wife was one said hey man you should see what's going on they hate you and I was like for what what did I do I didn't do anything I just took a job I became uh, my, my introduction to the world as it were as an actor was uh, people uh, seeing me in Terminator 2 as a villain, as the ultimate villain. They had no preconceived notion of who I was. So for me to have the opportunity to play a romantic lead on a hour drama on a non-network, but a, you know, cable network, or whatever Fox considered themselves at the time, uh, was great. Because I hadn't been given the opportunity to be a romantic lead uh, in film, unless I was doing a very low budget film, uh, would I get to play somebody heroic? I was always being cast as a villain, or something to that effect. So 
um, for me, it was a wonderful experience. And that's why John Doggett's one of my favorite characters. But it's fascinating to see this footage popping up on the internet. And I go, fuck, I don't remember doing that at all. Who are these people? <laughs> Scary. I might have to go back and rewatch it. You should. It's good. I, I don't like watching myself. I, uh, I, 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 I can do it like once. And then I, it's disturbing to me. <laughs> I mean, I, Sons of Anarchy. Supreme. No, I love that. Sons is one of my favorite shows. Obviously, love it. Kurt's a good buddy. Is he? Yeah, he's a yeah, good that's, that's, that's how that all happened. I mean, Kurt just uh, reached out to me and said, hey, man, I want you to come do my show. I said, sure. Because I'm, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a motorcycle. Right? Yeah. And uh, 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 I remember when uh, I got my motorcycle club, uh, uh, the chapter I started doing, uh, uh, we started building it back in Los Angeles after it had been dormant for some time. It's a 75-year-old motorcycle club this year. Uh, the only one that's in the Harley-Davidson Museum. And uh, I came back, uh, that's a long story, but uh, I was doing the unit and I had time to build the club back. Uh, the chapter in Los Angeles. Um, so uh, that was a couple of years prior to Sons. But while I was doing that, a lot of people were accusing me of writing a script about a motorcycle club or doing a reality show or doing this or doing that. It was entirely not true at all because I just wanted to be a member of a motorcycle club. I see you had many scenes with Gillian Anderson and Annabeth Gish. Do you remember anything funny happening while filming? Uh, I, I love both those ladies uh, tremendously. Uh, incredible ladies. By the way, Jillian was probably the sweetest thing uh, when I agreed to do that show. Uh, she sent me flowers with a note, very classy move, saying, uh, get some sleep. And it was very cool. And you got to imagine, my wife was nine months pregnant show started and i was worried about my son being born and i was doing the first episode there was a lot of crazy stuff going on in my life at the time uh and for them to actually cast me because they had to there was a swap -a that had to go on between nbc and fox and uh sort of like a, a baseball trade in a weird way um <laughs> she was so sweet and uh, we, we, Barbara and I went to her house for dinner a couple times. A lot of friends uh, met met some of her friends. Julie's a sweetheart, uh, and I'm, I'm she, I you know think the world of her, and I'm so excited for all her uh, great pro uh, projects she's been involved with and everything. And Annabeth and I had a history. We knew each other. We had the same manager, and uh, uh, we had done some stuff together. And uh, I was thrilled when she came on the show. So I had these two beautiful ladies to work with. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. And they were great. They're wonderful gals. Funny stuff on the show. I remember Jillian coming in with a wig in my trailer one day. <laughs> she looked like, uh, uh, what was that woman with the long hair? Lady Godiva. It was just this <laughs> crazy long hair. That's some funny stuff. There's a lot of funny stuff going on at the time. Uh, I remember driving around the lot with her and her Jeep that she was thinking about buying and we were driving around the 20th Century Fox lot. She was a lot of fun. That is an incredibly uh, hard show to do. Uh, in the sense of the hours involved with making that show. It's, it's an all-consuming job. How was doing that with an infant, really? That had to have been... Well, uh, uh, but it was, uh, you know, it was tough. It was tough because he was a little boy and I was trying to get my sleep. He was a baby. And sleep and sleep deprivation and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fatigue. And as I'm saying, you're just cramming the words in there and, and studying your butt off and uh, showing up being professional. I mean, I loved it. I thrived. It's like punching a clock. It's like going and making die cast aluminum forged parts for a Jeep or something. You know, I mean, it's like, it just, you know, you're, you're punching the time clock and here I am. I get to act for 18, 19, 20, 24, 26 hours, you know, whatever. And uh, it was a great experience. 
uh, and I wanted it to go on. I was really, obviously, very, I was very disappointed when uh, uh, Chris Carter uh, came and told me that he was pulling the plug. So, so I loved, uh, I, I loved Jilly. Jilly was uh, funny, the little Jilly boards they had. And, uh, you know, there's so much stress and pressure involved with making a show and being good and being on that there's a lot of laughter as a stress release for stupid stuff. And, you know, trying to think back now about it, uh, with anything specifically, I can't, I, it's hard for me to, it's, what is that? 24 years ago? Uh, at least. Yeah. Yeah. A, while. It's a long time. something <laughs> years ago. So Approaching the show, back. height of its popularity, you walk on. How did you approach that? Do you remember preparing for the role? Did you have to do anything special to work on such an established show? Not really. I just had to focus on the character and try not to pay attention to all the bullshit that's being spewed on the internet. And thank God I'm a bit of a Luddite, so I was late to the computers. You saw Thankfully, I didn't pay attention to that. Um, I have a, a, a very serious uh, work ethic, and I approached it uh, the way I do anything else. Uh, I have an acting coach I work with. We approach it the way we approach it. Uh, we do what we do, um, and uh, it was just any other role. The thing I love about John Doggett is all the things that the writers put into him. And they did all that considering the fan base and acknowledging that the fans were not going to be happy about this. And they didn't want a new guy. And we want to keep going with the show, so how do we do it? That was the beauty of John Doggett. And he from the get-go tries to come in and say look i'm not here to do anything other than protect you uh as a as a character protect the show the legacy of the show you know all this was all this was thought about as they put it into john Dodge. and i think they did a fantastic job uh and I, it's certainly one of the things i love about john Doggett the most is is He's uh, such an ideal. Uh, I feel like we need more John Doggett's in the world today. Um, he understands so much and represents so much in, in, in his willingness just to be forthright and do what he has to do in the situation. He, he, he doesn't believe but he does it totally, you know, I mean, he has a hard time dealing with all that. Uh, he, he, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to take away from anything that preexisted with, uh, Scully and, and, uh, the Mulder guy. And, uh, it was really beautiful. I thought, uh, you know, the first scene with Scully, which I do remember, uh, specifically because it was the water in the face scene. I thought, it's brilliant how they've introduced this guy because the, all the fans want to do this to him anyway. <laughs> and, uh, you know, let's get it over with. Um, you know, all this feeds into, you know, my disappointment when the show got canceled because, you know, at the time I was a get for uh, television having done The Sopranos and then coming from film and, and you're a get for the first time when they get you. And uh, they got me. And then we only did two seasons. And at that point, it's not so special anymore. You've already, you've already done television. You had a two year run. So, um, you know, that, that, was, uh, that was disappointing because like Doggett, I was earnest and uh, 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 you know, just in there doing doing the best job I could do. Um, um, when I went to these events, your table was always full of people, always the Lion View and Annabeth. So you changed the fans' minds. The one the one I'm thinking of specifically is in Florida a couple years ago, and 
you changed the fans' minds. They fell in love with Doggett. Um, do you have any fan experiences that stand out to you from any of these events? I've seen some weird stuff, not necessarily with you, but uh, do you have any fan experiences? It doesn't have to just be from X-Files, but Suns or, or Sopranos, anything that stands out? Look, I love my fans. I don't really know how to deal with fans, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm a... It's, it's a weird thing what I do as an actor. Uh, I love it, and I see it from my, my point of view, and I kind of, I, I have a hard time understanding the impact it has on other people, which I know is very strange. I don't dwell in that world of, of um, you know, I'm all this or I'm all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm kind of like I'm 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 so blue collar about the way I do go about my work that it's hard for me to realize the impact I've had on people in some of the roles, various roles that I've played. And I'm always really floored by the reactions I get from people when they're describing what it was like with their, you know, uh, father or their mother and watching the shows and and I you know I just don't see it like that I don't I don't think about it from that point of view like this is gonna really knock the socks off you know everybody you know what I mean and I think that's the thing that's the most uh, amazing for me is the fact that you know my work uh is enjoyed and um, has an impact on people's lives. I never really thought about it like that. And the funny thing is, it's so obvious because the very fact that I do what I do is the direct result of having been on the other side and being impacted by the arts and wanting to do that. You know, uh, it inspired me to pursue this career. Um, I, I, yeah, the fans are, they're fun. Uh, and I love them. I do. I, I really, really do. I've got to try to, I try to, uh, I try to be, uh, I try to, I try to meet everybody and realize this is maybe the only time they're ever going to meet me. And I don't want them to walk away going, what an ass. Because that, that would just that would just uh, destroy me. I, I really try to put it all out there and, and be a decent human being. Because I know if I were going to meet heroes of mine, I would I would I would not want to walk away going, Jesus Christ! For twenty five years, I love this guy, and he's a complete dick. You know what I mean? Uh, so I have you know, uh, there's a Jersey guy out there, Bruce Springsteen. I've never met him, and I don't want to meet. Him. Uh, I have so much respect for his music and his music really spoke to me when I was in high school and when I was in my formative years of really trying to find out what I wanted to do. And I, I, you know, it's, I've been close to meeting him. He's acknowledged me, but I, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm worried I'll be uh, destroyed. However, I hear he's a great guy. What am I trying to say there? I'm trying to, I, it, it's, it's a daunting thing for me to realize that I could have an impact on somebody's life and, I'm reminded of that at all those conventions. Sure. Uh, and I love the give and take, and I love hearing about this stuff. And, and uh, I, I hope it's not from an egotistical point of view. It reminds me of, of, um, of uh, that relationship and how important that is and the responsibility that comes with that. Uh, I've been very fortunate this year. I've got two iconic... Uh, uh, franchises I'm involved with right now. I'm currently uh, filming um, uh, the scriptures, Peacemaker, with uh, John Cena, James Gunn for DC Comics uh, yes. for HBO Max. And so I'm a I'm a I'm a comic book character now. Nice. And uh, and then of course we uh, we we filmed uh, The Walking Dead. Yep. Yep. And I'm super excited about the role I have. Uh, in the walking dead and 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 that legion of fans and they've boy they they they've been very uh, exciting uh they've really embraced uh what they've seen so far and uh 
they're super excited. So I'm super excited for them to see what uh, we did in that world. Very, I don't know. Very, two very iconic things. And I'm just, you know, I, I'm you know, 62 years old and I'm like, wow, I, you know, it's two more great iconic uh, franchises I've been involved with. So I uh, hope to have a long relationship with uh, the fans at the conventions. And by the way, those conventions are really, I miss them because I enjoy it. I may not totally understand the fans' point of view. I try to, but I enjoy the give and take with, with them. I love seeing and hearing, you know, uh, the response they have to the stuff. And, and you know, uh, the, 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 yeah, they're fun. They're, it's they're fun. fun. It's delayed gratification. Um, you wonder, you, you plug away, and you do, and you say, oh, I hope this somebody likes what I do here. Awesome. So our last question is one that we ask all of the cast and all of the crew, and that is, if you could say something to the fans from the past 25, 20, 27 years, what would that be? What's your message for the fans? Uh, I, my message for the fans is I loved making the show. I genuinely loved uh, playing John Doggett. Uh, I loved uh, all of it, uh, even when I was tired. And uh, you know, you 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 you. I I love the responsibility of really trying to deliver on something. And uh, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. John Doggett is one of the most special characters I've ever played, and uh, I'm really really grateful for the opportunity to do it. I loved working with Jillian, Mitch. James Pickens, um, David, when I did uh, the rest of the the rest of the cast, uh, everybody that came through there, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, you know, um, I'm John Dotty. <laughs> I always want to discuss the fans. Always want awesome. to discuss. Well, thank you again so so much. It was great to meet You're you. Welcome. Thank you both very much. Got All right. Money. Thank you so much. All right, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you.